Besides firearm questions. So you, um, just for clarity's sake, so he said you're the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. Does that mean going into August? Does that mean you would expect to be the guy going out on the field in Athens on the 30th? I mean, how do you kind of quantify this new status? So uh, you know, uh, it's just a, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing, being a leader of this team, and you know, kind of be a leader to other people uh, on the team and the offense. You know, going into fall camp, I'm the starter, but that like Coach Sweeney and Coach Morris told me that, you know, the quarterback position is not always a lifetime contract, and, you know, you got to go in there and you always got to perform. So, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to get better this summer. I'm going to get the team better, and we're going to go into fall, and, you know, we're going to strive to be our best. So, best put, maybe it's your job now to, uh, to not lose, I guess. Maybe is that the best mm -hmm. way to put Yeah, that's correct, yes. Kind of felt like people would look at that Chad situation and say, well, Cole's now the starter by default, but you pretty much have to feel like you won that job regardless mm -hmm. if he was here or not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I try not to listen to what other people have to say, like, oh, you went by default. You know, I kind of just been like, all right, uh, it's it's set, everything's been done with, and, you know, we're going to move on from here, and we're going to make the team better, and, you know, we're going to strive to be our best. Take away the fact that it was a three-way battle in spring. Mm -hmm. There's the fact that Taj has moved on. You know, suddenly you know, you're the one who's been here the longest of anyone who's been competing for this job. Did you maybe, as spring ball, continue to kind of look around and think, you know what, why shouldn't I be the leader since I am the elder state? Uh, you know, you can't really think of, like, all of that too much. You know, you still got to go out there and perform, like I said. And, you know, you just got to be the best you can be. And, you know, you got to be a leader and someone who motivates the guys to keep them going and get the team together. And, you know, you just, just really just got to try and strive to be the best, you know. Uh, you still got to perform. And you got to you – gotta, show that you can be the guy. So every day I kind of went out there, did the best that I could do, uh, been a leader, always had a p positive attitude to all the guys. And, you know, I, th I think, you know, it kind of went that way throughout the whole spring. So. Did you do anything to put your mark on the team early or, or leave, leave no doubt in anybody's mind that this is your team? Do you calculate anything mm -hmm. or, or does it come gradually? Uh, you know, it's just it's just everything that you know I've I've learned over the years with uh, the coaches and with Taj. You know, he's really showed how to be a positive example for the players, and really showed how to be a leader and motivate everyone. And you know, I think I've learned a lot from Taj and all the other coaches to step up and be that guy. But you're a different guy. Right. You're a different personality. Mm -hmm. You you don't want to be Taj Boyd. You can't be Taj Boyd. But how do you be Cole Staff? You know, I just just kind of be me, show up with a positive attitude every day. Uh, you know, just kind of do the best I can to build relationships with everyone on the team and just make people better uh, through me and my way. Just kind of just to show as a example to be in the program. The guys, the guys that I've talked to seem to trust you mm -hmm. and and admire you. Is that is that? Surprising at all, or is that something you've strived for? I think that's something that you build with relationships over the, over the years and everything. Uh, going out there and playing with these guys, they become your family. You know, I've been with these guys since day one, and you know, we come in here when they come in and we put our arms around, and be like, all right, welcome to the family. You know, so I think it's just the trust you develop with everyone over the years is really big to our program, especially with Clemson. It's a big family-like atmosphere. Even if you're not on the team, you're still part of the family. Clearly, you're not going to be satisfied with where you are right now, just being the guy. Mm -hmm. But when when coach told you that it's your job now, did you allow yourself to feel kind of good about it for a few minutes or a night or whatever? Yeah, I was I was happy, but I was also excited. But you know, it's just another thing saying, "All right, uh, you're the guy going into fall, so you got to now start stepping up and you know just keep doing what you're doing, constantly improving yourself every day." And making the team better. So, you know, I, for a second I was really happy, and then I was like, "All right, now it's, we got to get to work and everything. We got to develop the team, and you know, we're going to strive to be our best." This is your game experience you've had over the last couple of yourself. I'm thinking everybody thinks that you're this new guy, but there's times you've been throwing the fire like a couple of years against BC when Taj hurts his hip mm -hmm. and goes on a card, and you're, all of a sudden you're in there and you're in charge of winning the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 actually very helpful because. You know, with the more experience you have, the more comfortable you are in it in the game, and everything starts to slow down a little more, and you can make your reads better. And the more comfortable you are with the whole offense and the experience and the whole crowd, and being able to drain that out, you know, it's it's very uh, you guys kind of keep on a 
calm level the whole time. And you just know how to control the situations and you know, you can just help your team get in the end zone. Are you ready for all the distractions that come with being the starting quarterback as mm-hmm. well? I'm sure you've seen it with Taj the last three years. Are you ready for what that responsibility is? Uh, yeah, you know, I've learned a lot. You know, I know that there's going to be some scrutiny every now and then, but it's just got to be a way that you just got to drain that out and just keep uh, keep just doing you and getting your team the best that they can be. This is your first time, I guess, in four years since you were senior in high school. Mm-hmm. You know going into a season you're probably the starting quarterback or whatever you want to say it. What's the difference now compared to then? Is there a difference? What's the comfort level maybe knowing, you know, I've got the starting job? Uh, you know, it's – the starting job's always like how it is. Even in high school, it's still you got to go out there and perform. And, uh, you know, coming into a college situation, it's more of a business-like situation than it is in high school. You know, pressure's a little bit different. But you still got to go out there and, you know, be the best that you can be and, uh, you know, show the program uh, good good things and everything. And, you know, you got to get the team the best they can be. Do you think Chad will – Coach Chad Morris will call the game – differently with you as a quarterback compared to Todd? You guys are two different kinds of quarterbacks. Uh, I don't think he will. Uh, you know, We'll see how it goes, though. Uh, I know that when I had to go in for games, Coach Morris would all look at me and be like, hey, game plan's not changing. We're staying the same. We're still going to throw, do the reads and everything. And you know, uh, and I've succeeded at that. So, And we did it all through spring. Uh, and I, th- I think it'll be about the same, but it could have a little more wrinkles and everything. it be a little bit different knowing that Taj isn't here. If he was in your situation after waiting three years to be the starter and he's told, oh, you're going to be in a quarterback competition, he don't think he would have handled it as graceful as you did. Can you talk about when you were told after all this time you've been waiting that you're going to have to win the job, what that was like and mm-hmm. your mentality going into it? Uh, you know, uh, me and my dad, we've talked about it. And, you know, my dad always told me that, yes, it's a competition. And it's always going to be a competition. No matter what level you're at, they're always going to bring the next guy in to try and the next best guy. So it's always a competition. Every day is a competition. So uh, going into spring saying it was going to be in a competition, I say, all right, well, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do the best that I can do. I'm going to perform the best that I could possibly be, lead the best way I can. And it's going to be the coach's decision. But I know that I'm going to give it up my all and do everything that I can. Yeah. So. Among the many things, and, I, and I'll ask you about that in a second, but among the many things your dad has impacted on you, he had to sit behind a guy who eventually right. ended up in the Hall of Fame. Has that maybe helped? Because you would have sit behind a guy who is going right. to be in Clemson's Hall of Fame one day. Yeah, you know, me and my dad, we really connect on that because you know Terry Bradshaw, he's he's one heck of an athlete, you know, win Super Bowls and everything. And my dad knows what it's like, uh, so he knows how I was feeling. Uh, he may have had a little more edge you know, on it and everything, but I'm like, I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to be the best that I can be, perform my level. And he understood what I was talking about. He knew that every day I had to go in, prepare to be the starter. Uh, that's what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Even when I was behind Taj, I had to prepare to be the starter because there are situations like my freshman year when Taj went down against Boston College, I had to go in there and uh, let him down for a game-winning drive, and uh, we ended up winning the game. And I had to go in there a few other times, and. You know, I was I was prepared and I felt comfortable with it, and you know, just being preparing to be the starter every day has it helped me improve myself as a player and uh, a part of this team. And again, from your dad, you've inherited obvious skills. But can you talk about some of the things I, I heard you after the spring game say you'd go watch film with them. I've heard you've worked mm-hmm. out with them in the in the indoor facility. I mean, a lot of sons of former quarterbacks maybe don't get that impact. Can you just kind of go over some of the things and how he's helped you mm-hmm. with working out and film study and all that? You know, it's it's tremendous because when I'm not here working with Coach Morris and any other coaches, I can go home with my dad and on off days over the weekend we can go over the indoor and throw. And, you know, they, we have iPads where we have all the game film on it. So I can go home after a game or something like that and just sit around with my dad. We just talk uh, football and everything. And, you know, he's been a huge help in my development for uh, this program and, and being uh, a class leader. Like... Uh, just someone who is very, uh, I don't know how to say, like a, a leadership role. Uh, I've learned so much from him, and you know, everything he tells me, I always do because he's made it. He's he's been in the NFL 15 years. He knows what it takes to get there. So when he tells me how something's supposed to be done, I, I can't really say anything against him. I'll be like, all right, yeah, okay, you're right. <laughs> Cole, was there? Um was there ever a time here at Clemson where you seriously considered, 
know, I don't know if I can take it that any, anymore. And I'm, I'm specifically thinking maybe January 2013 when Todd says, okay, I'll be back for another season instead of, you know, jumping into the NFL. Uh, honestly, since I've been here, I haven't thought of one moment of ever leaving this place. You know, I was born in Greenville. Coming back down here, making a visit here, it was like coming back home. Uh, even when I came here for uh, the Maryland game, that was the first game I came down here to the game I got offered to. Uh, the, I'm walking up to my seats, and our neighbors from Greenville, when we lived there, were grabbing me and saying hey to me. So it, it was just a family-like atmosphere. And when I got here, uh, all the coaches were just – great and they just they never made me feel one time felt like this isn't the place for me and in 2013 when Tosh said he was going to stay you know I still didn't think about leaving I'm like all right it's going to be another another great year you know we're going to be here we're going to we're going to make the team the best that we can be and you know now that Tosh is gone it's kind of sad that he's gone because we've done so much together we're now basically like brothers and you know it's the fact that him not here is kind of sad so you know I've never really thought ever about leaving. I love Clemson too much. <laughs> you know, I was born in Greenville, so I was born with orange in my blood. So. Oh, you said that you're even killed to be here. The importance of that. Going into spring, did you think that gave you a significant advantage uh, in the quarterback Uh, you know, just uh, experience and everything. Uh, experience helped a little bit, but you still had to go out and perform uh, because there have been guys that go into college and they're a first-year starter when they're a freshman. So, you know, you still had to go out there and perform and be the best that you could be and show a leadership role and have guys be able to follow you. What was, the connection, I'm sorry, what was the connection to Greenville that you were born here? Was your mom from here originally? Because your dad was from up north, wasn't he? Uh, I think they were just coming through and, you know, they were visiting some family up in North Carolina and South Carolina. And my dad told my mom, was like, all right, if you find a house, you know, just let me know. And then four hours later, she calls and says, hey, I just bought a house. So <laughs> it ended up being a, a great move. You know, they, they love the Carolinas ever since. Um, you know, my parents are both born up in Ohio, but they still love South Carolina more than any place. But they still have a place down here too, but they moved to Dublin also? Is that uh, no, they moved down about uh, two years ago, uh, right before the South Carolina game. And, you know, they've been here ever since. And it's great knowing that they only live 30 minutes down the road, so I can go see them every weekend if I want to. You thought about your dad inputting. He's obviously he played in a different era, but I mean, is he mm -hmm. kept up to the game? Where you know he, I would think, speaks the language of the read option and all that. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of cool. We sit around, we can watch any football game, and he'll be like, okay, well, we we could rewind any play, and be like, oh, this guy was open this way, should have read, and you know, that's that's another uh, very helpful thing that we have another another brain inside the house where he could talk to me and speak the same language, football language, to me and. You know, it, it really has helped me improve my, my level of play. How long did you live in Greenville growing up from the time you were born? Uh, I lived there for three years. Uh, well, we moved to Vegas for five years, which was awesome. And, then, <laughs> and then, then we moved to Ohio. We were in Ohio for about 11 years, and then we came back down. Is, is there a sense of urgency for you knowing this year, no matter what, it's going to be your only year? Uh, make the most of it and also make the most of a chance to give an impression for professional scouts coming mm -hmm. up. I'm sure you want to play at the next level as well. Right, you know, everyone wants to play at the next level, but you still got to go out and perform, like I've said before. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can do. You know, whatever, whatever way it makes the team win, I'm going to do. And, you know, it's going to be an exciting year, and I'm really excited about it. And, you know, we're going to make the, the most of it, and you go from there. Because Deshaun was committed basically since you've been here, mm -hmm. There's probably a certain segment of the fans that are really looking forward to seeing him play. How will you handle kind of that pressure of knowing that he's behind you and some people are just going to be wondering how he's going to? Yeah, you know, there's there's really like not a lot of pressure because we're both like great athletes, and I know that when he has to go in and when I have to go in, we're both going to perform to our best ability. You know, since since day one that he's got here, I kind of treat him like how Taj treated me when I got here. He put his arm right around me. He's like, all right. Here we go into the program, and you know, Ty. I've learned so much from Taj that I want to be someone that can help other players. You know, help them understand what to do, how to be a good face of the program, and how to be a leader. And you know, I've learned a lot from Taj, and you know, I want to help Deshaun be that next guy. 
Uh, I know that Deshaun Walsh perform. I've watched him in the spring. He's done incredible things throughout the spring, and he's looking really good. And you know, knowing that we're both that we both can handle this offense along with the other quarterbacks too, is very comfortable. So I don't feel a lot of pressure. I feel comfortable with the fact that uh, he's on this team. Does the football uh, strategist or the football I'm a fan of you? Have you thought about how Chad may use? Deshaun, because there's a pretty good chance mm -hmm. two quarterbacks will play. Right. Have you kind of, you know, been able to kind of dissimilate how that might work? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, you know, we still have a lot of time before fall. We still got a lot to improve on throughout the summer, so we'll see how it's all going to turn out. Cole, how much of a bond do you already have with the receivers, and how hard did you try and convince Sammy to stay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I tried to convince him as much as everyone else did. Uh, you know, Sammy was a great athlete here. You know, probably going to be one of the best receivers to ever come out of here. But the receivers that we have now, they're extremely well uh, and very comfortable in the situation that we have right now, especially the chemistry that we got. Uh, we have multiple receivers that we can hit. And throughout spring, we have developed a huge stride in our chemistry. From day one to what it is now is completely different than you'll ever find. Um, but, you know, we're going to be working on it all summer. Uh, we're going to get to the best that we all can be to make this team better. You know, constantly working on uh, footwork and routes and just being on the same page every day. And then when we come into fall so we can show the coaches, hey, we've been working, we, we're ready for this season. Was there anybody this spring, uh, receiver-wise, who kind of opened your eyes a little bit? Uh, and maybe not just the new guys, but maybe guys, returning guys, and, and you said, boy, yeah. this is going to be a great time. You know, Adam, Adam Humphreys, he always shows up and works every day. And, you know, that's something that uh, everyone on the team sees. They always see him as a leader of this team because he shows up and works and he never complains about anything. He just does what the coaches say and he gets things done. That's why he's made, that's why he's been such a great player here. You know, Mike Williams is also the same thing. He had, he had a great spring. You know, we finished out strong and everything. And, you know, even the new freshmen coming in, they've been looking really good. So, you know, the receivers that we're going to have are it's, it's going to be really good because we're going to have a very a large variety of what we can do with every receiver. Is that one of the underrated qualities of a quarterback, especially when you have three, probably at least three new guys mm -hmm. that have to make an impact of being able, you know, to realize, look, I can't just look off just because I have faith mm -hmm. in Humphreys or Williams or Peek or whatever. I mean, that's kind of a challenge, I would think, of making sure that, you know, you're focus on all the different options you have to throw to. Right, you know, that's what that's what we're developing over the summer is the chemistry to be able to, okay, Mike's not there, Adam's not there, let's hit Tay or something like that. You know, being able to go through all, all of my reads and still feel comfortable with everything. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're pretty much on that page. You know, I've always been one to take what's there and what's open and knowing that I can trust the new guys coming in and the veteran guys is – is very good because it expands the offense even more. Not that you, I'm asking you to speak for him, but when, once you knew and you called your dad, did he, was he, was his reaction more or less than you expected or just about what you thought it would be? About the starting situation? About, about what? Starter, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I called him, told him. Uh, he, he said he's never been so happy before, and when he was reading all the articles and everything, he said that it's so hard to read these without tears coming down my face because he was just so happy that uh, you know I finally got something that I've been working so hard for, and you know if I still got to go out there and perform, I know he's going to be right there with me. So he feels some satisfaction too yeah. after all of his hard mm -hmm. work. Yeah, he's yeah. he's been there since day one. And, you know, I, I I couldn't have done anything without him. He, he can be a little crusty sometimes. Uh, not all that much, <laughs> but you know, it, he's he's just a dad. You know, he's always out there. He he wants me to be the best that I can be, and I've never argued with him about it. You know, if he always, he's the one that taught me how to be coachable. You know, ever since my freshman year of high school, when we go out throwing, I just do whatever he says and listen to him about throwing and stuff like that. And you know, he's he's the one that taught me to be coachable and just relax and have some fun. And you know. Uh, so he, he's, he's the one that really developed me and really got me to the point where I'm at.
does your approach to this summer change now that you're the starter and went with it and it, rather than if you've been in the battle? Uh, you know, it's I'm still going to approach the same way. Coach Sweeney told me uh, that there's, you know, you still have to have that edge on you. You always got to strive to be better. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not going to lose the edge of what I would have if I was going in the summer with Chad. But you know, I'm still going to go out there and be the best that I can be. Be be hard on myself when I when I mess up. You know, just to just make myself better and you know to get the team better. So does your mother know she's going to have to feed the offensive line? <laughs> she's, no, she's actually excited about that. Uh, my dad was like, yeah, get the guys up. I know your mom would love to cook. And he's like, I don't think your mom's ever been so excited before uh, to cook for a bunch of guys. But, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know she's excited about it. Are you going to do something special for battle on the left side? Oh, I have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to have – we've already talked. We're going to have cookouts and stuff throughout the summer, you know, hang out, play some volleyball. But – yeah, you know, that's not our free time, but you know, when we get out on the field for skills and drills and everything, it's all focus and getting better.